Welcome everyone to Jen's Joyful Kitchen where you get tips, tools, and tasty recipes to help you cook fast and healthy meals. So I'm Jen, I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist, I'm also a Pampered Chef consultant, and I'm a paid nutrition advisor with the Calorie Control Council. And today I'm featuring how you can lower calories and carbohydrates in foods that you cook and bake. So today I wanna to teach you a little bit more about low and no calorie sweeteners. So I don't know how many of you are using low and no calorie sweeteners, but they're a great option to help you reduce calories as well as carbohydrates for weight maintenance, healthy weight achievement, and managing diabetes. So today I'm gonna to share with you how you can do that, how you can still be successful in your recipes as well. So be sure to check out this recipe, which is going to be chocolate toffee bars that we're making today. You can find this on the Calorie Control website, so caloriecontrol.org, and you're gonna find a whole bunch of other recipes there as well. So be sure to go to that website and see what's available, and you'll also learn more about low and no calorie sweeteners too. All right, so what I want you to know is, first off, I don't know how many of you have tried baking with low and no calorie sweeteners, but there's a little bit of a difference when you are baking and cooking with low and no calorie sweeteners. They're a great option to reduce calories and carbohydrates, but what you may not realize is that when, you, when sugar is being used in a recipe, you actually are not only getting the sweetness, but you're also getting volume to help kind of pump up or plump up that recipe. And when you decrease the sweetener, you actually have to make up for that volume. So very much all the time when you're, when you're using things like lower or low, no calorie sweeteners, they're often twice as sweet as regular sugar. So that in itself means that you can reduce the calories by using half of that, but you don't wanna lose the volume. So what's great about an option is using something like a blend. And a blend is simply a mixture of sugar and also low or no calorie sweetener. So that's what I've used today in our recipe. So you can try that at home as well. And I want you to know too that when you're baking with low and no calorie sweeteners, you need to make sure you're finding the right sweetener that also won't change flavor while it's getting heated. So I've got some options here for you. So the first one is a saccharin based sweetener. So that's totally appropriate for heat, um, whether it's hot drinks or cooking or baking. You may find that under the Sweet and Low brand name. Also, Stevia is another great one for using in your cooking and baking. It's heat stable. And then Splenda is a sucralose-based product, and that is another great option for cooking and baking. So if you were to take a spoon, which I will do, oops, that's a fork. <laughs> so taking a spoonful, this is this baking blend. Sometimes, like when I'm baking, I'm thinking, oh, wouldn't a spoonful of that sugar be good? But you know, that's not always a good option. But this, it looks just like brown sugar, but it's a blend. It's got half Splenda and half brown sugar in it. And if you were to taste it, it tastes just like brown sugar. And you would never know the difference. And I like brown sugar, so. <laughs> so. I want you to know that you can try this at home. There's even some great recipes, you know, on the calorie control website for baking cookies and other types of things. So give it a try and see what you think. So now you know which three low and no calorie sweeteners are great for cooking and baking. Let's get into our recipe. So this is a chocolate chip toffee bar or chocolate toffee bar. I'm sorry. So this is a great recipe for kind of that back to school time. I don't know about you guys, but did any of you have a mom that made treats for you after school? I know I had a mom like that and we'd come home and there'd be bars and cookies and things like that. Now, were those maybe the healthiest? Probably not, but as a kid, that was really exciting. <laughs> and so I like to think of that too, that it's kind of fun, especially that first week back to school, maybe you have a little treat. And this one can be one that you might think about making chocolate toffee bars. It's really just a quick three-step process. First, you're gonna make the crust, then you're gonna make the middle, which is the toffee, and then you're going to have the top, which is the chocolate drizzle, which everybody likes chocolate drizzle, right? So I used the brown sugar baking blend in all three steps. And this recipe, again, you can find at the Calorie Control website, so caloriecontrol.org. 
So all three steps had it. So this is the crust, and you're just simply mixing up butter, a half a stick of butter, and then a half a cup of the brown sugar blend, one egg yolk, and then a cup of flour, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. So mixing that all together, and then you're gonna press that into your pan. So this is gonna make enough for a nine by 13 inch pan. And you'll wanna just press that in there, and then you're just gonna bake that for about 10 to 12 minutes. Kind of want that golden brown look over the top. While that's baking, you're going to make that toffee. And the toffee is simply kind of just a mixture of a few ingredients that need to come up and boil for a little while, and you need to use a candy thermometer so that you can measure the right um, stage to put it on top of your crust. So to mix the ingredients together, you just need, again, a little bit of butter, quarter stick of butter, or I'm mean, sorry, a half a stick of butter, and then you need some corn syrup, you need some of the brown sugar blend, evaporated milk, and a little bit of vanilla. So that's it. You're going to put that in a saucepan, just like what I have here, and you are just going to let that first start to dissolve. So putting it on low heat, and then you'll simply turn it up to maybe mid medium heat and get it to start to boil. And that's where you throw your candy thermometer in and you get it to 265. It takes about 10 minutes. So while your crust is in the oven, you are making the middle, and that's super easy. You don't have to babysit it too much. You're just making sure that the temperature is continuing, continuing to rise. So what I've got here is I've got the crust and I've got the toffee over the top. Once you have that toffee made, you simply just throw that in the oven for 10 minutes. And you take it out and you let it cool for five minutes. And you're going to, at the same time while that's baking a second time, you're going to make some melted chocolate drizzle over the top. Now who doesn't love that? So I want you to do a double boiler style for your melting of your chocolate. So double boiler means that you're melting something above boiling water. And you don't want the water to get into what you're melting because it can ruin the texture. So I just put some water in my saucepan, I start it to get to a boil, and then I turn it down because I know it will stay boiling. And I throw in three squares or three ounces of unsweetened baker's chocolate. So unsweetened, and then two tablespoons of the brown sugar baking blend. Super easy. You're mixing that together, and it becomes liquid, and you can just drizzle it over the top. So we've got our drizzle going right over the top of our toffee and right over the top of our really good crust. And then you're simply going to just let that spread out. You can help that along a little bit, but you're spreading that out and you're just going to let it sit on your countertop and let everything cool down because you want to just have everything kind of kind of freeze up a little bit. That's kind of what your goal is. So again, chocolate toffee bars, great for a back to school treat. And this makes about 30 of them. So you can even share them, bring them to school with you if you're um, working at school or maybe you work in an office, just take them with you and share it. And no one will ever know that they're lower in calories and lower in carbohydrates and they still taste good. So I've got one here. I've got my little, oh, I forgot. You put some uh, pecans over the top. Once you get that over the top, then you just let it set. So you can see I've got that there. I've got my little corner piece out and it's got the layers in it. So you can see what that looks like. The layers, you've got the crust, you've got the middle, and then the top. And I'm just gonna take a little bite. <laughs> okay. It gets to that hard crack stage when you're doing it, but yes. So you can definitely taste the sweetness, but then you got kind of that base layer where there's a little sweet in it, but not a ton. So it kind of offsets the other sweetness going on. But remember, lower in calories, lower in carbohydrates. Find this recipe on caloriecontrol.org. Find a whole bunch of other recipes there to help you as well. So thanks so much for watching, and I hope you're having a great day, and hope you have a fun start to your school year. Bye-bye.